concepts what we discussed uh, in our last session yeah last session right we started with the introduction of selenium and the introduction to java in instruction introduction to selenium what we discussed right what is the selenium tool and what is the selenium tool brief history and who developed that selenium tool and what are the benefits of uh, selenium tool and in selenium tool uh, just let me uh, give you right quick overview of uh, the selenium tool once again selenium is web test automation tool web application automation testing tool by using selenium we can automate uh, web applications functionality by using selenium we can automate only web applications and it supports multiple browsers multiple operating systems and it supports multiple programming languages and it is open source tool so it is a free we can download from the net selenium hq.org that is the website where you can find selenium installation files as well as documentation also available in that doc in that website okay anyway that i will show you later uh, in our later sessions after completing java core java concepts okay selenium is really right i have it it has very good demand nowadays in the market all right in the companies right they just started using selenium in almost all web application projects they are using selenium tool for automating that particular application even if they are using right uft tool already nowadays all clients are migrating to this uh, tool from UFT to reduce their uh, project costs and see using selenium in selenium tool we can use multiple programming languages to develop automation scripts see by using any automation tool what we do we automate uh, test cases okay we will be automating test cases so how we how do we automate test cases that means we develop a, some kind of program for all the test cases that should be executed so this program this program that means that program what we are doing for all the cases can be written or can be developed by using different languages in selenium tool so that is a one more advantage of selenium eclipse sorry in selenium web driver yeah sorry yes i didn't share my screen to all of you till now right now are you able to see my screen yeah yeah okay good okay see now in selenium we can use uh, different languages to develop automation uh, script so what are the languages that we can use java python ruby perl c sharp javascript these are all the languages we can use to develop automation script by using selenium but generally most preferably we use java core java as the programming language to develop automation test scripts in selenium so it is very important to know the core java programming concepts to start working with a selenium tool definitely we should have some good basics knowledge core java basics knowledge so then it will be easy for you to work with selenium 
So without knowing core Java basics, so it will be a little difficult to work with Selenium. Okay. So that's why first we are starting with core Java concepts, core Java concepts. First let us try to understand and let us try to practice uh, some few core Java basic concepts, right, which is, uh, which are useful in our script development using Selenium. See for that to start with the core Java. So let us uh, try to know some basics of core Java. What is Java? See, you can install Java from this uh, site and also right, to work with core Java, we need uh, some kind of uh, GUI tool. So that GUI tool uh, can be Eclipse or we can use NetBeans. So our uh, Intel NJ, like that. There are some uh, different types of uh, uh, tools are available to work with uh, core Java. That means to develop Java programs, we can use these tools, Eclipse and NetBeans, like that. So here we are going to use Eclipse as our uh, tool to write Java programs. Okay. So you can download uh, now, Shaker, once that Java installation is completed, you can please go to this link. I will be ping, I will be sharing you. Yeah, sure, uh, Vara. Uh, it's completed actually, Java. Yeah, 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 good. Now, see, go to this link and download that Eclipse. Yeah. It, it, will, it is just a zip file, okay? Uh, that will be downloaded yeah. into your mission. And let me know once it is uh, down, once it's download is complete. So now let us I talk about brief description about core Java concept. See core Java, Java is really very powerful programming language developed by Sun Microsystems. Now it is Oracle. <coughs> and see in Java there are different types of uh, editions like uh, J2SE, J2EE, J2ME. There are different types of uh, Java uh, editions. That means each Java edition will be useful for a specific purpose. J2SE means standard edition, enterprise edition, and it is mobile edition, okay? And see here, by using Java, if you write a program, by using Java programming language, that can be executed on any platform, on any operating system, on any device. So it is it is right platform independent. Java is a platform independent. That is one one of the major uh, important uh, feature of a Java program. So that's why it is very powerful. Okay, and also it supports multi-threaded programming and distributed applications development. And it is more secure language. Java is very secure programming language. Okay, these are all general uh, features of uh, Java language. Okay, and now come to that. Once you download Java, right, you can find yeah. So once you once you download the Java, so in Java there is something called right JDK that is a Java development kit. You can see that a JDK folder will be downloaded in your system once Java is installed. So that is nothing but it contains a, a set of uh, Java library files, jar files, where they defined all predefined methods, classes, all Java predefined classes are defined inside that files. So that means those are the methods we can use while in writing or in developing Java program. We will be using those methods and classes in our Java programs. That we will be discussing, we will be learning that while writing the programs, what methods, uh, built-in methods are available in Java and what is the use of those methods. Okay, those things and all, we will be learning it during the program, practicing the program, Java program. Okay, see now, the one more important uh, some basic rules that we should know before writing any Java program. Say so every Java program will be written or will be defined as a Java class. 
every Java program will be defined as a Java class. So what is a class means? The general definition of class, what is a class? So the class is nothing but it's kind of a template with a set of uh, properties and uh, operations. Properties means your variables, the set of variables and set of operations. Operations means your methods. So generally in any Java class, what will be there? Any Java class contains only these two entities, variables and methods. Got it? So generally variables means to store some values, we use variables. And methods will be defined to execute actions, what actions uh, you want to execute. So those actions should be defined in methods. So in generally, we can say like this, and class means nothing but it is a template which defines a set of uh, variables and methods in technical terms. In general terms, I can say it is a set of uh, properties and uh, operations. It defines a set of properties and operations. See, for example, if I give uh, in general, right, uh, in the real world, a real world example for class. Suppose if I take a mobile, if I say mobile, what what is that mobile? What you get into your mind when I say something mobile? What you will be getting into your mind? Can you tell me, anybody? If I say mobile, what you will be getting immediately into your mind? What thought, what idea you will be getting immediately into your mind? Uh, hello, anybody? So if I say mobile, then what do you, what do you think of mobile? Hello, anybody talking? I'm not getting... Yeah. Nagarazu, any, any, anything? See, what do you think when I say something mobile? Immediately, what you'll be getting in your mind? Say something like, uh, what is that? Mobile means, okay, there will be some display for that, correct? What is a display? And what are the other features are there in mobile? What you can do with mobile? We can call, we can send messages, correct? or something we can make, uh, we can listen music. Hmm? What are the other common properties or features uh, of mobile? Generally what we see, display and what is the processor, correct? <coughs> the speed of the mobile. So th that means these are all general, right? We are not talking about any specific mobile. I'm not talking about here any a specific uh, uh, company model or a specific model. I'm not talking about any specific brand or any specific model. I'm talking in general mobile. Mobile means uh, it can be something, uh, some device of size, uh, different sizes, correct? With the different uh, screen uh, display resolutions and with the different features like, uh, what is that? Com there will be some common set of common, fe common features like uh, call, making call, receive call, send message, receive message. Correct? Listen music and uh, something like a uh, camera. Hmm? So these are all mm -hmm. common act actions or operations that we can perform by using that device, mobile device. So these are all common operations that we, that uh, mobile device can uh, support. Similarly, that mobile device may definitely every mobile has some set of uh, features or I can say properties physical properties. What are the physical properties I can say? What is the size of that mobile? Correct? And what is that uh, display resolution? Or what is that uh, camera? What is that uh, pixels? So these are all, uh, what is that? Features are the physical properties, properties of that particular mobile. So when I see, when I say something mobile in general, you will be 
getting into this in into your mind all these things what are the features and what are the operations that we can do by using that mobile correct so here this mobile is a class mobile is a class why it is class it is something logically define you are defining see when you say mobile there is no real device in front of you correct there is no really device available in front of you just you are thinking of something mobile device what the what what properties uh, every mobile or that mobile device should have and what operations that mobile device should support so something you are thinking about this one these are the properties should be there and these are the operations that mobile should support minimum is it right that means that is called a class that means you are defining a structure for that device with some set of properties and with some set of operations uh, that should be supported by that particular device understand so here what i can say class means it is not a real object it is something uh, you are you are defining the structure or template of some object logically you are defining is some template or i can say some structure of some of some kind of object so class here it is not at all show giving you or showing you or giving you any real object just it defines a structure understand so it is it is a logical entity class is a logical entity understand now if i give you or if i uh, show you one particular mobile device of a specific brand of a specific model what is that device is so that device is now real reality okay now that device is available you are seeing that device in front of you so this device definitely will possess the same properties what we defined in the mobile device uh, class and this device definitely should support all those operations which are defined in the mobile class because this device is a mobile mobile that means this device properties and operations are matching to this particular mobile class properties and operations so this device belongs to mobile class understand that means this object is possessing all the properties and operations which are defined inside mobile class so what i can say so this device is a mobile understand so this particular device may be having uh, some particular brand a uh, particular model and it may has a specific uh, screen uh, screen size got it and it may have some specific uh, what is that uh, processor capacity and ram capacity what is the processor speed all those things so that that is what that is a, that is a real object when i say when i show you some samsung uh, mobile a 7 mobile something so that is a particular object this particular object possessing a same properties and operations which are defined inside mobile class similarly if i give another another mobile xiaomi mobile so that is also mobile device with a different properties and with a different uh, operations little different so but this device also belongs to mobile class got it now that means for the same class there can be multiple objects all those objects will be having same set of properties and operations with different values different values means see for example samsung may have different screen size xiaomi mobile may have different screen size it may have different ram size and different uh, processor speed everything so the its values might be different even sometimes operations can be different understand that means samsung may support like uh, different uh, features of a camera but uh, same features may not be available in xiaomi mobile is it right so like that 
but the basic common there could be some set of common operations or common features properties so those properties and operations should be supported by both the devices then we can say both the devices are mobile mobiles understand now by example what i am trying to write uh, do here i am trying to give you one example real time example what is the class and what is the object because in java language every java program will be defined as a class so what is a class means it is something logical entity where we defined some set of properties uh, that means variables and we define some set of operations how we define operations as methods understand so that is called java class so every program in java will be defined as a java class and another important point here the class name should begin with capital letter always and inside the class we can define multiple methods and every method should begin with lower case letter and that java class should be saved in a java file with extension dot java all java classes should be saved inside a java file with extension dot java and one more point here that particular java file name should be same as the class name so these are the important rules that we have to keep in mind while writing the java program and in every java class it may not be mandatory what is this main method we no need to define main method in every java class but from which java class you want to start the execution so in that particular java class the main method should be defined without main method java classes cannot be executed understand so if you want to execute any java class so inside that class this main method should be defined so the main method syntax is always like this public static void main okay clear guys these are the important four important points that we have to remember while writing the java program and now another important topic uh, in any programming language the important concept is variables and the data types in every programming language first you should know how to de define variables in that programming language and what are the different types of data can be used in that programming language for those variables data type means nothing but what type of data can be assigned to that particular variable so every variable should be defined with some data type in java language so first of all what is a variable means variable means nothing but uh, it is just a, an identifier identifier means uh, the same some name okay so that means it is a variable is something entity if you define some variable and to that variable you can assign the value and you can modify the value whatever you want you can change that variable value and you can use that variable value whenever you want in your program that means to if you want to store some value or some data and if i want to use this value a later point of time in my program and if i want to modify that value we can do that but it, so that is called variable so whenever you define a variable to every variable we should define its data type what type of data can be assigned to this particular variable okay <clears throat> so now in java first let us show you let me show you how to create a class uh, in the last session we already created let me again show you uh, eclipse see once you download this eclipse it will be a zip file correct just you have to unzip that file unzip that folder eclipse folder then you will be getting this unzipped folder structure like this and simply double click this eclipse.exe file to launch that eclipse tool while launching this eclipse tool it will ask you 
to select a workspace that means working folder in which folder you want to create your java project in which folder you want to use as a working folder for your project so that folder can be selected you can select any folder in your mission you can create one a separate folder uh, with some workspace as a name and you can select that as a working folder suppose in case if it is not asking you to select the work, workspace folder while launching the eclipse tool after launching the eclipse tool you can go to file and here you can change switch to workspace it may be opening some default workspace and then you can open a new workspace you can create and open a new workspace by clicking this other and then here you can choose a new working folder path whatever the folder you want to use as a workspace okay guys fine so once you create a new workspace and then once you open that new workspace here uh, it will be empty package explorer will be empty in the left panel you can see that it would be empty and now you can create a new project go to file click new java project in case if it is not uh, displayed here then you can go here others and then you can choose here java project once you click this java project now go to next and enter your java project name give some name and select your java version which version is installed in your mission that can be will be displayed here automatically then you can choose that and simply click finish that's all so new java project folder will be created in the package explorer window in the left side panel okay guys so all of you please do this first I'll please create a java project in your missions okay let us go with today uh, with some small pro programs uh, creation all of you so first once you create a java project and now Razu, have you created just please create this project in your eclipse system shaker what happened downloading is completed uh, or professor, uh, the Java, the Eclipse, uh, Java got download. I pay the Eclipse download just now. No, maybe you can have a JDK 1.8.0. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, once let us know the Eclipse download is completed. Okay, yeah, yeah, complete. I'm the uh, finished. Uh? Okay, then go to that down uh, uh, download folder where it is uh, downloaded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please download and install a Java runtime environment. JRE. Is it, it is it coming now? That message is coming. Uh, in the Thank you for using Eclipse installer. Uh, okay, click click that click then done install it. Click mm -hmm. click install it, no problem. If it is already installed, yeah, yeah, yeah. install again. If it is not installed already, it will install it. No problem. Okay. okay. Let us continue. Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. so if uh, in your mission, Eclipse is ready, right? Uh, yes, Krishna, I have created, yeah, yeah. Uh, all no, of them on the created space also. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. And Silesh, uh, I think so you already. Silesh, I think so. I think uh, I hope you already created new project in your Eclipse. Mm. Mm. Uh, okay, I put negative. The first go to eclipse folder or no eclipse downloading folder where you downloaded eclipse go to that folder uh, okay zip file you can find zip file right eclipse zip file uh, zip file name like the eclipse uh, uh, win 64 and jpc is in the one second one second download one second. second can you show it me your screen one second yeah
say i will give you as a presenter if you show me your screen yeah, yeah. Yeah, just now share me your screen now, okay? Yes. I can see here if you share. Yeah, yeah one second. Now share. Uh, download, click channel. No, no, share me your screen first. Click on screen. Oh, you share your screen and then to become a presenter, please download a small extension yeah, yeah, yeah. to select the... Download, download it, download it. Yeah, yeah. Once it is downloaded, you can okay. share your screen. Mm, it says add extensions. Yeah, okay. Add it. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I said you. Yeah, one second. Still not visible. Yeah, got it. Yes. Yeah. Where is that folder? Go to that folder now. Where you download it? Here, uh, in downloads, Eclipse. Are you... Eclipse installation. It is asking installation. Why it is okay? Double click that. Oh, Windows Java, it's showing Java is not installed. JR is missing. Scroll down. Yeah, it, it is installed. Huh? JRE, download this JRE 1.80, both. This one? Yeah. 8.0. Yeah, install that. Download it. Right. We have so many things coming, like which one I have to select. One second. Windows, right? Your operating system. No, you can go to that first. My, did you open that Java download web page? Yeah. My first link, go to the Java. This Java, Java setup, uh, this one. Uh. Yeah. Executed that one? Executed? Then yeah, yeah. Says do you want to allow, yes. Yeah, it will, it will download Java and it will install it automatically, right? You know, it's already installed, actually. I don't know. One second, let me see. Yeah. See how to define that path again. Yeah. Right click on computer properties. Yeah. Advanced system settings, environment variables, and in system variables, select path. Click edit. Yeah. And here you can add new thing. You can click new. Yeah. Here you can yeah. paste that bin part yeah got it yeah got it yeah let me try okay and now you can install that eclipse yeah it should go now if you still get any issue let me Uh, Nagarazu, have you installed latest version Neon or like this one Kepler is installed in your machine? Yes, yes. I installed uh, 64 bit only. No. My operating system is 64 bit. I 
on which version of uh, eclipse is installed is it eclipse kepler or eclipse leo the one you shared is that, that is only so you uh, you also got downloaded as a exe file or uh, how it downloaded no no package only i have downloaded not exe but why it is now coming here there is a down exe file that location was it is in us right no. that is not the problem i'm saying let me open here let me try how it will be downloaded eclipse dot org Yeah, when I downloaded it for me also it is downloaded as a package as a something directly. Download what is this? Get Eclipse Neon download sixty four bit. professor yeah hello yeah advanced system ses settings right can i click on it right yeah right right click on that uh, the, then environment variables right yeah yes environment variables inside that uh, uh, then system then i variables. have to select path right path in the bottom list not bottom list path, path in yes. the top list okay yeah 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 then edit yes edit and click on new button and uh, click on new right okay yeah so then here i have to copy right you said pardon and now what what's uh, what I, I clicked on new uh, and then paste that paste it uh, inside right you got one text box right editable text okay at the bottom Oh. No, I'll show you. See that? Mm -hmm. See when you go here, right click uh, properties, advanced system settings, environment variables, select path, click edit, and click new. See here. Yeah, yeah, I click the new right. Yes. Uh, so you here paste it in this uh, text box. Yeah, we, we, from which one can I paste there? Like you know, where can I go and copy and paste? Yeah, you co you didn't copy that uh, bin folder path. I told you right here. Oh, I did not copy that. So yeah. I have to go in uh, downloads. Not in downloads. See, one second, one second. Mm -hmm. I will show you. First, go to Java installation folder, where Java is installed in your system in C drive. Okay. Go to C drive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go to C drive. Pro yeah, C drive. Pro program files. Java. JDK. Program files. I did not see Java in my program files. So. It's not there. No. Inside program files, Java is not there. Java folder. Then okay, you check it here. Inside the program files, eighty six. There are two folders you can find: program files and program files eighty six. Which folder you have opened? Hello. Hello, Shaker. Hello, Shaker. Hello. Shaker audible? Is it audible? Yeah. Okay, let us uh, let me give quick uh, recap of data types. What we discussed. So in Java, there are nine uh, primitive primary data types. See, this first one is byte. Byte means it is integer type. It's a size of uh, data type is uh, eight bit in size. And we can assign these values to any byte variable minus 128 to 127. 
and the next integer type is short it is 16 bit integer uh, uh, Prasad, yeah. sorry no, uh, disconnect type in, in internet oh no, that's what <laughs> you are not off you are on offline okay yeah 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 that's not you know wondering yes now it's got connected yeah. and uh, i still I did not complete this no no one second i think so in your mission java is java folder is not found right you told me that correct can you please check in this folder whether you have anything inside a program files 86 folder hello shaker again is it disconnected hello shaker hello I think so again it disconnected yeah it disconnected again hello shaker yeah what person yeah no yeah yeah got it yeah go to properties yeah just let me copy this and run system settings part variable edit click new and paste it here uh hmm our person hmm when I clicked on that uh, bin, I am not able to see that path uh, in my system. It's uh, it's coming um, this PC, local disk, C program files, Java, like that it's coming. What you are telling me? One second. So when you Can you see my system? This one, right? Now, are you able to see my screen? Uh, yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. Like this, you are not getting? No, uh, no. C program files, it's not coming like that. You know, I am, for me, it's coming different. What is that? Uh, one second. It's coming, you know, this PC, local disk, C program files, and Java, JRE 1.8.0, underscore 131, bin, like that coming. Okay, like that it is coming. Fine, you, you go... Mm. No, we installed it right from our uh, uh, from here in Java setup file. We installed it in our mission. Okay. Right. Yes. Yes. We installed. Right. I can see up to bin. No, when no. I click on bin, I can see a lot. This no, is no, no. That is not the path. You should you should be in C drive. Go to C drive first. Ah, uh, yeah. C drive. C drive only. Yes. Program files. Mm. Inside program files, Java folder is there. Uh, I have two program files are there. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm telling you. There are two program files. One is program files. Another one is program files by 86, correct? Uh, yes, exactly. I clicked on that one, yes. No, no, first one you have to, program files you have to open. Uh, in program files, I don't have Java thing. Oh, you don't have Java, okay. So, but inside by 86, what is that? Java folder is there? Java folder there, yes. Oh, here only JRE is there. JDK is not there. Only Java there, yeah. Inside Java, what is there? Uh, only Java, JRE 1.8.0, score 131. Oh, that is only... There is no JDE. Okay, but in C program files, nothing. Java is not there. Inside no. program files. No, no, no. There is no Java. That means it's not installed. Correct. Oh, okay. Oh. Mm. Then again, I have to one second. Now I can get your mission. Again. Otherwise, you know, I can continue. Or so maybe other people got disturbing. Like mm. uh, okay, but you. You can set up me later, I know, if you want. I think so. It won't take. It should not take much time. That's what I feel. Okay. If it is installed properly, okay. So in our Eclipse page, right, we are getting a JDK, those links, correct? Can you, one second, I will give you control. Can you please go to that page again? We will download it quickly and install it, finish it. Otherwise, is there any way you can download and do it exactly? Yeah, that's what I will 
get the control yeah now because for me a little bit confusing actually yeah, yeah. Sh share me the screen quickly and give me control I said you. Yeah, one second. I got the control. You got any message to? No, uh, I didn't get control. One second. Oh, you didn't get a control. I said you. No, what you said, screen or the control? Uh, that one, whatever you know, it's a option came like sale. I clicked on save button. Oh, okay, okay. But not at net, net speed is a problem. Maybe. Uh... Otherwise, WordPress, we can continue with them, you know, uh, we can yeah. see okay. later, you know. Okay, Shekhar, uh, after, after this session, right, maybe we'll be going on, uh, what is a break, right? In that, that time, we will see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, break time or, you know, otherwise, you know, after completing this class, we can Yeah, see. I think so, we can finish it in the break, so much just, uh, let us see that. Okay, that's fine, yeah, no problem. Go ahead with this, you know. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes, I should continue. Yeah, okay guys, sorry guys, I should have to complete this uh, actual installation before the session. Uh, sort of. Yeah, guys, let us continue uh, with our Eclipse programming, first programming. <clears throat> yeah. So we're discussing about data types. So byte is a uh, eight bit string and short also it is an integer type and it is a 16 bit in size and integer is 32 bit and long is 64 bit. These four data types are integer data types. Okay. Now let me write a small program uh, by using with these integer data types variables. Let us write one small program now. Uh, once you create a project you created, I hope all of you created a project. Now go to SRC and right click on this SRC and create a new package. Go to new package and define your package name, whatever you want. So here I, I define the stack.core. Like this you can define with your name, whatever it is. The package name and click finish then this package will be created. Once you create a package, then create a new class. So here I will be creating new class, new class inside the package. Select the package folder, right click on that and create a new class. See here I'm giving the class name as uh, integer types or simply I can say data types data types is a class name and click finish by default select public as a modifier and click finish so inside this stack data types class java file is created and inside this java file data types class is defined got it so you please create a class and then here define main method I will be defining a main method because I want to test this uh, class execution so I should define a class uh, I should define a method main method inside this class how to define main method public static void main and string ERGS 
it is the main method syntax correct that so one main method is defined now inside the class uh, before main method let us define some variables with the type uh, uh, different types of uh, integer types whatever we have seen here a uh, four types of uh, integer data types are there byte short integer and long right now let me define two different variables with the different uh, integer data types say a first uh, variable i am defining as byte and it is uh, say x is equal to 5 byte it is a byte data type x variable is a byte data type and i will define one more variable integer is equal to sorry integer y y variable name is y is equal to 10 semicolon okay so every java statement should end with semicolon okay it is mandatory and this byte integer these are all case sensitive okay say byte is a data type name integer also data type name these are all case sensitive that means b should start with b small b all these letters in this uh, byte should be small similarly in integer all letters should be in small if i write capital letter it may throw error see it is throwing error understand so it is a case sensitive language so we should be very careful while typing any while writing the program byte now i have defined two variables one is a byte variable one is a integer variable now can we assign suppose if you want to assign a y value to x can we assign a, a y value to x suppose if i write here x is equal to y see that what happens x is equal to y yes what is the setter Oh, sorry guys i cannot write this statement here correct only declaration can be done inside the class you cannot write any statements directly in the class itself if you want to execute any step except uh, declarations variable defines uh, variable variable declarations where you can execute where you can define any other steps inside some method you should define any step other than variables declarations in the class so i cannot write here x is equal to y like this understand because it is not a declaration it is a something action that you are executing you are assigning y value to x variable okay so that cannot be executed directly in the class itself so where it should be defined inside main method see inside this main method you can do that so here i am doing x is equal to y so that x is equal to y see what is happening it is showing some error okay let it be error why this error is coming we'll discuss uh, i will explain you see now i am trying to assign y value to x y is equal to x done see why these errors are coming a simple reason see the main method is defined as a static method main is defined as a static method so there is a rule in java program inside static method we can use only static variables there is a rule got it guys so that is why it is throwing error here because these variables are not defined as a static that's why we are using non-static variables inside the static method that's why this error is a, a error we are getting here so to remove this error what we should do we should define here all these x and y variables as a static so i am defining here static keyword that's it static x static y 
So I will explain you later in detail about this static. What is the static is? We'll discuss later in later sessions. Okay, don't worry about this. What is the static keyword is? Why we are defining that? At present, why we are defining this now? Because we are using this x and y variables inside main method, which is a static method. The main method is a static method. Got it? So because of that, this x and y also should be defined as a static if you want to use those variables inside this main method. So for that purpose, we are defining x and y variables as a static here. Okay. And we will discuss later what is a static means. Okay, don't worry about that now. Now still, if you see here, there is an error in this statement. But in this statement, there is no error. Why we are getting error in this statement, I will explain you a little uh, bit later. So I will comment this line now. I am commenting this line. Comment means double slash. You can use Java code. Okay. So if you want to comment any Java line, one any one line, then you can use this double slash. If you want to comment uh, multiple lines together, then uh, you can comment, you can use this comment character slash star at the at the first line, at the beginning of the first line, and uh, at the end of the last line, up to which line you want to comment it here, you should type star slash so by using these characters we can comment multiple lines at a time so all the lines between these two characters slash star and star slash all the lines between these two characters will be commented so this is the multiple line commenting characters if you want to comment a single line then you can use simply double slash Got it guys, that is the Java commenting characters. See now what I'm doing here, I am assigning x value to y. And now I want to print that y variable value. So how to print any values in the console? We should use this statement, the Java statement, system dot out dot print line. Out dot print, see here. You have print, print means uh, print, print line. There is small difference, print line. What is the difference is, if I give print, let us see that difference also. What is the difference? Say I'm giving here print. So what is the value I'm printing? Y variable value I'm printing. Y equal to, and see here I'm using plus character. What is this plus character? See this Y equal to, I am putting these two characters uh, within the double quotes, correct? Within the double quotes. So it is a string. So any 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 text which is enclosed with double quotes is a string, okay? Any characters, any number of characters, if those characters are enclosed within the double quotes, that is a string, okay? So it is a string. And I want to append another string with this string. So to append that string with another string, we are using this character plus. So it is called a string concatenator, concatenation operator in Java. Plus means it will combine two strings. So to combine two strings, we are using here plus operator. Operator means uh, what is that character here, okay? Plus character is a string concatenation operator in Java. Okay. So what is the string? Second string I want to concatenate with this the value of y. So I am printing here y variable. It is a y variable. Y variable. So and give semicolon. That. So this statement will print y equal to y value. See it is a variable. See, this y is not enclosed with double quotes. That means it is not a string. It is a variable. Okay, it is not a text, hard-coded text. So this is hard-coded string. Okay, that means what value will be, it will be printed here? 
y equal to these two characters will be printed in the console after that immediately immediate to this equal character next to this equal character this y variable value will be printed whatever the value at present is assigned to this y variable that y variable value will be printed after equal character in the console got it that means it will print like this y equal to see why why i have given capital letter inside the double quotes so capital letter should be printed after that equal character is there so that should be printed as it is after that what is the value of y what is the value of y here in this statement so y value here is assigned to x what is the x value 5 so that 5 will be assigned to y so now here it should print to 5 so this is the value should be printed when you run this statement now now in the next line i am printing system dot out dot print here i am printing x value x is equal to x is equal to and i can give plus and i am giving x variable clear and here let me add one more one more thing some space i am adding here some blank space after y value after y value i am adding some blank space so here in both these statements i am using print statement okay now if you run this class java class what will happen first it will execute this x value x will be assigned with 5 y will be assigned with 10 then it then here inside main method what we are doing x value we are assigning to y so y is a 5 now so in this statement y is equal to 5 will be printed and here what will be printed it will print x is equal to 5 it will be printed in this second system now dot print statement now let me run this quickly see that see you can see that y is equal to 5 and x is equal to 5 both are printed in the same line understand in the same line these two are printed y is equal to 5 is printed after that space say this space space also space also displayed after this, after the space x is equal to 5 is printed is it right so that's how it is now executed say that again when i run it y is equal to 5 and then blank space is there and after that x is equal to 5 so when you use print statement what is happening the values are printing are printed in the same line so if i use here print line so just look at that if i give here print ln now how values will be printed so let us see that let me write in separate line so i am giving here i am copying same statements control c and here i am pasting it okay and here i am using print line print line now if i run the statements these two statements will print y is equal to 5 and x is equal to 5 otherwise here i will do uh, some other things see here uh, i cannot assign x is equal to 5 right time being okay leave it otherwise here i am changing uh, y value again y is equal to x plus 5 see i am executing this statement y is equal to x plus 5 now what is the y value here after printing these two statements what i am doing i am adding x and y and this sum value is assigned to y variable what is the sum of x and y here y is 5 x also 5 both are 5 so 5 plus 5 y becomes 10 in this statement so now i am printing y is equal to 5 by using print line statement and here print is not i am using just print not print line so here i am using x is equal to x plus x is equal to 5 should be printed sorry what is the y value here 10 not 5 and what is x value x is still 5 so x is equal to 5 will be printed but these two values how will it be printed in two lines not in the same line got it 
say these three will be printed in one line and this will be printed in the second line if I run this program. Let us see that. If I run this, see that x is equal to 5, y is equal to 5, x is equal to 5, y is equal to 10 and x is equal to 5 is printed in the second line. That means See that these three values are printed in the first line. Only this value is printed in the second line. Why? See why these three lines are printed in first line? Why this is not printed in the second line? Simple. What print will do and what print the ln will do? You know, the print statement will print the value in the current line wherever the current control is present in the console in that line in the current active line it will print this value and it will keep that control in the same line that is what print will do what print line will do it will print the current value that means all the value within this bracket this whole value will be printed in the current line wherever the control is present in the a console in the current line it will print the value after printing this value, the print line, what it will do? It will move the control to the next line. When it will move the control? After printing the value, it moves the control to the next line. What print will do? It won't move the control to the next line. It will keep the control in the same line. That is the difference between print and the print line. So, this print line will move the control to the second line after printing this value. So now control is in the second line when you are running the statement. So that's why this value is coming in the second line and these three values are displayed in the first line. Suppose now if I write another statement, see that like this. Here y is equal to x plus y or y is equal to something x into, x into 5, x into y y equal to x into y. So here I am using both the print line statements. Print line statements. <clears throat> so here also I will give some blank space to give, to give some space between x and y values. So I am adding here some more blank space. Okay, done. Now tell me how the values will be printed. So these three values will be printed in the first line. This value will be printed, this and this. These two values will be printed in the second line. And this value will be printed in the third line. Are you clear? That's how it will print now. Just say that. <clears throat> if I run this. So you look at that here below. Three lines are printed. these three in the first line and these two in the second line and this is the third line okay so <clears throat> see now now see here if I uncomment this line if I write here the same line here if I try to execute this statement x is equal to y it will throw error why it will throw error what is the problem in this statement very simple. If you say that, what is the x type? It is a byte. And what is the y type? It is integer. Which one is in big in size? Which is a bigger data type in size, in terms of size? See, byte is just 8 bit in size. Integer is a 32 bit in size. Correct? That is the size of data types. If you see our document. See that integer is 32 bit, byte is just 8 bit. Okay. So which is the bigger data type here? Integer is bigger than byte. So what you are trying to do here? You are trying to assign a bigger value into small value. So y variable is having more space. It is it, its size is very big, 32 bit. And x variable size is just 8 bit. Sorry, 16 bit. Correct? 16 bit. 
So when you try to assign like this, it will throw error. That means this is the source variable and it is a destination variable. That means you are assigning this value into this variable. So this is the destination variable and it is a called source variable. Correct. So whenever this destination variable, that means left side variable, that is called destination variable. The, whenever the left side variable is uh, small in size than the right side variable, then you cannot assign the values like that. It will throw error. But opposite is possible. Say that here. When I assign, when I execute this statement y equal to x, what happened? y is integer. It is a bigger variable than x. X is just a byte. It is 16 bit. It is 32 bit. Got it? So but here, sorry, eight, X is a 8 bit, correct? Not 16 bit. Byte is just 8 bit character. Okay? Yeah. So not a 16 bit. X is just 8 bit character. Y is 32 bit character. See here, we are assigning small variable into big variable. So not a problem. And both variables are a number numeric type variables. Both are numer numerals and you are assigning small variable to bigger variable. So that's why it is allowing you to assign x value to y without, without any error. It is not showing any error. But in this statement, when you write x is equal to y, what is happening? You are trying to assign a bigger variable to a small variable. Integer to byte. So byte is very small in size, y is big in size. So that's why it is not allowing you, but here it is allowing you. That means it is called here auto, that means the Java program automatically converts this variable value into integer data type whenever you run this statement. Whenever you are assigning x value to y, what happens? Even though these two variables are two different data types, since y is big and x is small, so it automatically converts that x value into integer and that can be assigned to y. So this is called automatic conversion. It is called auto conversion, auto data conversion, data conversion. That means automatically the Java program will convert small variable value into bigger variable type. If it is, if the left side variable is bigger in size in, and the right side variable is small in size, here data type conversion will happen automatically. Understand? But in this line, the left side variable is small in size, right side variable is big in size. So you cannot assign like this. But still, the value of y is within this uh, limit, right? X is 8 bit. Up to what value you can assign into x? Up to 127 you can assign to x variable. What is the value of y? 10. So still this value can fit into this x variable, but only data type is different. It is not allowing to assign that value, correct? So in that case, still you can assign this y value to x by converting this y value into byte. By manually, that means explicitly you have to convert it. This conversion will not happen automatically like here, how it is happening. X is assigned automatically converting into Y. That means the X value is automatically converted into integer and that value is assigned to Y here. But it is not the case here. The Y value is an integer type. So the integer type cannot be converted into byte type automatically. But still, you can convert that forcefully by defining this one like this. See, byte this statement. See now error is gone. So this is called typecasting. In Java, this is called typecasting. Type casting double slash. Typecasting. When this typecasting should be used in Java, that means here you are defining, I want to convert this y variable value into byte data type and then that value should be assigned to x. Now that means before assigning y value to x variable, what we are doing? 
we are converting that y value into byte data type then assign that to x x is already defined as a byte variable and what value you are assigning now we are assigning byte type value to x so that's why it, it will allow you to assign this byte value after converting this y into byte that can be assigned to x variable without any error if i remove this statement it will throw error say that it is throwing error because you are assigning now directly integer value to byte variable which is not accepted in java so that is why it is throwing error so to to write to skip this error or to solve this error what we should do we have to define this y variable as a byte that means we should convert this y variable into byte then assign that value to x so this is called typecasting in java program you got it guys so these two points are somewhat important in data types so sometimes when you are working with uh, numbers data numeric data using variables so you will be doing uh, right these kind of uh, operations like uh, what is that arithmetic operations adding and multiplications divisions then assign that div uh, divided value or multiplied value or sum of uh, some variables into some variable so during this so this is called arithmetic expression is it right arithmetic expression means star asterisk is a multiplication symbol correct and the plus is a addition symbol so like that we have some arithmetic operation operators right so you are performing arithmetic operation on these two variables and the, the value of the expression result will be assigned to this variable y so in this process sometimes you will be getting this kind of issues due to mismatching data types so whenever there is an error due to mismatching data types then you may have to convert that bigger data type in the right side into smaller data type value of left side variable by using type casting like this got it guys you have any doubts in this concept you have any questions you have any questions any doubt in the type casting and automatic conversion when automatic data conversion will happen will occur in the java program and when you have to convert our uh, data types into other data types by using type casting feature in java so can you ping me that if you don't have any any doubt then we can go with the next Nag nagaraj do you have any questions yeah no no doubts Okay. okay guys so now this is about integer see here sometimes right you may have to convert uh, some string values into numbers okay something like that see for example if i have some value like this see i will define now some string character variable a string variable so i'm defining now uh, some string variable inside this method uh, string Suppose if I define uh, txt is equal to core Java is my a string assigned to this variable. Suppose this variable name is uh, concept, okay? Our programming language, language, language is equal to let us use small variables. Language is equal to core Java. Two double quotes one double quote so string is here it is derived data type see we don't see string as a primitive data type in our primary data types of java we don't find the string only character is there what is string means string is nothing but uh, array of characters array of characters is it right string is here class object in java string is a class with a set of characters array of characters so it is also a data type but it is not a primary basic data type it is derived data type what is its base uh, data type character this is the base data type for string character chr 
say by using this chr we can assign only single character see for example if i define here one more variable static chr i'm giving one character ch is equal to capital a ch is equal to capital a say that that means here ch is a variable c uh, let me see define it as a, okay ch is a variable and what type of variable ch is character variable that means uh, to this variable you can assign only a single character any character we can assign so here i have assigned only a character to this ch but here i am defining language as a variable what type of uh, variable it is it is a string variable because i want to assign a string value text value to this variable not a single character if you want to assign a single character to any variable then that can be defined as a character type if you want to assign right a text or a string to any variable then that should be defined as a string data type string here i define here so now see that see for example uh, i have one more one more string i'm defining string is equal to marks marks i'm defining marks is equal to uh, within double quotes always a string value should be uh, within the double quotes so double quotes semicolon okay inside that i'm i'm giving some marks 50 see what is that marks value what type of value is there inside this marks what type of value is assigned to this marks variable it is a string value but what is the value actually we are putting inside that double quotes a number value we are putting correct but how this 50 is stored inside this variable as a string as a string so sometimes right while writing in the real time scenarios uh, you may be getting the values like this that means you will be getting a numeric value as a string you will be reading like that from some text file when you are reading the, uh, some value from the text file or from notepad file even that value is numeric value whenever you are reading that value from the text file it will be reading as a string understand but it is actually numeric value but still that value will be reading as a string so similarly like this so when i assign when i put 50 within the double quotes that that numeric value is converting into string and that string is assigned to this variable marks now suppose if you want to if i want to uh if i want to write uh, take percentage of marks what is the percentage of marks i want to calculate for this particular marks value i want to calculate percentage how to calculate that see that now i am defining or i am printing that i want to print percentage system dot print sorry, system dot out dot print line so per, marks percentage that is what i want to print marks percentage how to calculate that marks percentage now plus plus means after this string i want to print some more uh, something else so then you should add here plus concatenation operator plus then what value i want to print the percentage of this 50 marks so how to calculate that what is the formula marks fifty by hundred correct hundred by fifty guys how to calculate that marks percentage i mean confusion divided by hundred is it right into 100 into 100 this is the formula correct marks say i'm putting it in brackets within the brackets so i want to calculate my marks percentage what is the percentage of my marks clear guess say how to calculate that marks by 100 into 100 is it right so now 
see it is throwing error see that why it is throwing error since this variable is not a number what is this number what is this value this variable is a string variable so you cannot perform arithmetic operation on string variable say this variable value is 50 the value of this variable is a 50 it is a numeric number but still this variable data type is string so that's why you cannot use this marks variable in this arithmetic expression you cannot divide a string value by 100 or you cannot multiply a string value with 100 it's not possible so that's why it is throwing error so what i should do here i have to get a number value from this marks i want to get a numeric value from this string value so how to get that see that here i will be using integer dot <coughs> see here integer is a class it is a built-in class in java integer so by using integer you can get see the size of that integer or what is the bytes these are all methods available for this particular class integer class see uh, there are so many different methods compare compare using unsigned compare divide okay see we we want to i want to get the numeric value of this string marks so the statement method is value of see that the value of input value should be string the value of string see i am selecting this one the value of this string variable i want to get what is the written value it returns see it is a written value integer it returns integer value so this is the method i can use see the value of marks marks then put that within the double quotes integer value of marks now put here one more bracket say that still not going here integer value of marks remove this undefined integer that is right integer dot value of marks into 100 what is problem yeah integer dot value of marks correct okay let me remove this okay still throwing error okay so now i should put here divided by 100 If I am not able to divide it by 100, this will undefined for the document type as integer. something on the okay yes I'll do one thing 
I will be getting this into some variable. Let us say do that. This is creating confusion. So here I am getting some integer. So I am getting here uh, m is a marks value. How I am getting that integer dot value of integer dot value of string value. Okay. Yes. M your ks marks marks assign that okay integer change that one not yeah integer is assigned to a marks now let us use here m variable m into hundred Oh, there is something showing a wrong. m dot integer value of m yeah, now also what is the problem right? it should be correct Okay, okay. Integer value ampersand hundred. Yeah. Now it is fine. See why it is not accepting. See that here. This statement returns integer. See this integer is not a basic data type of int. This is basic base data type int. This is a class. Integer is a different integer is a class in Java. Similarly, string is a class in Java. Got it? So that's why you cannot use this uh, m as int. See, in this expression, you should use only int data type values or integer values, not object class, class integer class values. So that's why if I write directly m in this statement, it is throwing error. See that? If I use m, it is throwing error. See that? The operator at asterisk that means multiplication cannot be applied on integer type value got it so what i am doing now by using this integer variable m so what i am doing see m dot get int value that means this m value from this m value i am getting integer type value again see that this is a value state method i am using m dot int value it returns from this m it returns only int data type value that means it converts that m value into int data type and that will be returned by using this method got it guys m is your integer data type variable understand and this variable value if you want to get in in int data type what is the statement we are writing m dot int value and this it returns this m variable as int data type and then you can apply automatic operations on that value that is what we have to do by 100 into 100 now it is allowing there is no issue see how we are converting see that string marks string is a string variable with value 50 from this value, I want to calculate percentage by using this marks variable, which is defined as a string variable. And to this string variable, I am assigning a string a marks value 50 as a text. And by using this variable, I want to calculate a percentage value. How to do that? See what we have to do first, convert this string value into integer. 
and this from this integer we are getting int value that means int data type value by using this method m dot int value and this value should be used in the percentage calculation expression now it will print 50 percent i want to print percentage character so i am adding that percentage character inside double double quotes so after this value i want to print percentage so if i run this state program this statement will print 50 percent value should be printed let me run this zero percent is printed it returns zero then correct m dot int okay yes i think so let me check that is there any other way to get this from here marks dot see here these are all methods of uh, string string see string is a class string is a class so for this string class, there are methods, string methods. So these are all string methods that we can use. So in the string methods, uh, we can get any integer value, no, right? Yeah, value of two string, two upper, two character, okay. Value of value. Okay, we will see some examples with the string methods. Why it is printing m dot integer value was not written 50. Let me try with other method. Is there any other method values? Short value, string value, byte, no. String. It returns integer type. Okay. Okay. Only not integer values should be correct. Float value, int value, long value, short value. Okay. Let us try this. No. It is correct value. Okay, let me print first m value. Yes, what is the value of m? System dot output. Marks value I am printing just. Marks is equal to m. Let us see that. From this program. What is the value of m? Marks is 50. Correct only. Okay. Maybe this formula is making long. Let me run it now. No, zero percent is coming. That means it returns zero. It returns zero value. Let me check that. It may be returns zero value. Comment it. Yeah, Fifteen is coming correctly then this formula is wrong okay that means m dot value is uh, correct might be then this formula something wrong that's why it returns uh, zero okay. 
by 100 into 100. plus percentage okay now let me run guys i should get 50 percent yeah see the formula wrongly written here that's why we are getting zero done okay guys see here what i have done here is uh, converting string into integer that is what i have tried here conversion of data conversions data conversion what we have tried string to integer how to convert string value into integer that is what the example this example is doing i have assigned 50 as a string to this variable and then how to how we are calculating percentage by using this variable string variable so how it is calculated, how that string value is converted into integer value and how that value is used to calculate percentage. Okay, similarly, see that there are some uh, character methods. That means a uh, character method, see here, ch is equal to a, small letter, capital letter a. So there are, there are some methods we can, uh, we can use on character. Yeah, yes, yes, we can take break. Uh, we can take break now it is uh, 8 to 7 uh, we will meet back at around 8 uh, 8 20 okay we'll meet back please join back at 8 20 that means take let us take 15 minutes break after 15 minutes we will join back and shaker the main time right we will see your issue okay your, issue, your system setup yeah okay guys thank you Uh, Shaker, are you there? Okay, so this typecasting should be used whenever you are trying to assign a, a bigger a data type value to smaller data type variable. So in that situation, typecasting should be used. Otherwise, it will throw error. Typecasting means nothing but, so the data type into which data type you want to convert this value so that data type name should be defined before that variable within parentheses. So that is the way, that is the way how we have to define typecasting in Java. And after that, I have tried to show you that uh, some data conversion by using some methods. So there are some methods that can be used uh, sometimes to convert one data type to other data type example. So here, I have assigned a numeric value to string variable marks. So now this 50 is a numeric value, but still, since it is assigned to a string variable, now it is a string. So by using this string variable, if I want to calculate a percentage from this variable, so then that means this string variable cannot be used directly in the automatic operation, that means we cannot execute any automatic operation on string variable. So we can't use that variable directly to calculate a, a percentage. So what we should do first, I am doing here, I'm converting that 
string variable value into int into type data type so here you don't get confusion here i'm using integer see integer is different int is different int is a data type okay and integer is a class in java okay it is in a kind of object i can say similarly string string is a class see actual primitive data type for this class string is character chr that is a primitive primary data type in in java we have but string is a class here so this string class have some set of methods similarly this integer class also has some set of methods so we can use those methods sometimes string method or integer methods to convert data from string to number or number to string like that say for example if i want to convert some number value into string data type then i can use a string method see here i am using integer method to convert a string value into integer type so here we are using integer dot integer is a class built in java class so integer dot value of a string value we are passing here so it returns integer type value that means it is a like object it is not a value here since integer is not a data type here it is a class so here this statement returns integer type value so integer is not actually a data type it is a integer object class so that's why we can't use this m variable directly in the automatic statement so what we are doing again from this object we are getting the value by using this statement m dot int value so here we are getting the actual value of that number and that number value we are using in the automatic statement to calculate percentage so that is how we are using suppose if you want to convert a number into a string say how we can use a string uh, method methods let us see some string methods how to use that uh, string methods examples say for example i want to convert uh, x value or y value what is the y value here uh, it could be 10 correct 10 or 5 y value is 10 i want to convert that y value as a string now let us see that uh, system dot out dot print line so I'm getting y value is equal to see I'm I want to convert that number as a string. Suppose if it is the if it that is what I want to do, then I can use here string string class dot value of see look at that here. We can convert different data types into a string. See the these are all written values. These methods takes this input what is the input of first value of boolean value what is the output or written value string similarly here it takes a character returns a string here it takes a array of character character of array as an input and here it returns a string value double to in string float to string integer to string long to string see that these are all inputs different types of inputs that you can pass to this value of method to this value of method and then you can get what is the written value string as a written value from all these methods so now i want to uh, pass integer as input value and i want to get string as a written value so i should use this method see that here so i can pass here y as input pass y so this statement returns a string value what is a string value it returns this 10 will be returned as a string got it see now i can apply a string method on this value suppose now i want to get a, a length what is the length of this uh, string 10 length means the number of characters how many characters are there in that string uh, 10 so then I can apply a string method called length, see that size, I think, length or size, size I think, right, 
not size length see that length so this length is actually a string method it returns uh, the number of characters in the given string see that suppose if you want to find the length of this uh, y variable value what to do first to convert this y variable into string by using the statement string dot value of y so it returns a string value from this from this y variable and that string value length i want to find length means the number of characters in that particular string so it returns 2 what is the length of 10 2 there are two characters 1 and 0 so that is the length of that value y that means here i am getting y length y value length y value length that is what i want to print here l e n g t h y length So now this statement should print 2. Got it? Say y value. Let me print here before that. Y value. First I am printing y value. It should be 10. So here I am giving just y. Y. So here I am printing first y value. And in the next statement we are printing the length of y. Y value. So now let me run this and let us see these two statements uh, output. What is the output we will be getting? See that y value is 50 not 10 might be it is uh, changing here after 10 uh, where we are updating y value. Where we are updating y value? Oh here y is equal to x into y correct maybe here it is changing x into y means 5 into 10 so it becomes 50 here so it is not a 10 50 here okay so that y value is 50 but length of y is 2 number of characters in this term. so you cannot apply length method directly on y variable got it you cannot do that if it is a string you can do see for example uh, now i want to get the length of this language variable what is the length of this string I want to get? So let us print that. I want to print length of language. L-A-N-G language length. So here you no need to convert this language variable into string because language itself is a string variable directly. Is it right? Language is defined as a string. So you no need to convert this value into string again by using this statement. So I remove that and directly I'm using LANG language is a variable dot C dot. All string methods will be displayed here. See this language is string variable. So all string methods will be displayed here. Then use length. Length. That can be used length. So here it will print the length of this value, string value, core Java value. Got it? Let me print here core Java value, language is a language value. What is the value of language variable? First print it and then get length. So now it should print, see nine characters. So inside this value, there are nine characters. So that is what displayed here. So similarly, there are so many uh, string methods are available. Uh, to check that, let me try some another string method. Suppose if you want to get a substring uh, from this core Java, substring means suppose I want to get uh, what is a string that is present uh, from character number. Say it is the first character one, two, three, four, five, six. J is the six, right? So from sixth character, I want to get seven, eight, nine, six to nine characters I want to get. From this whole string, I want to get the substring starting from sixth position up to ninth position. What is the string there? I want to get that substring value. So how to get that? The language get substring. So here you can use different method for that. There will be some method language dot. See that substring. 
So here you can define starting and the last position substring. Here you can define, go with this method. So starting is 6, ending is uh, 9, 9. So let us see what it will print from 6 to 9, 6 to 9. Now run this. say that okay j is not coming so maybe that position number is 5 then we should start with 5 5 to 9 okay 5 to 9 it should print now java see this is a substring okay extracted from this particular uh, main string core java so like this uh, right there are uh, some important uh, some very useful uh, string methods we can use if it is a string variable, then directly you can get string methods by typing just a dot after that string variable. Okay, so now let us try another some other thing. Here I want to get. So what is the character at position at particular position from this particular string? So that I can get language dot say character at. That means it returns a character at a particular at specific position. Suppose if you want to compare uh, this language variable value with another way, another with another string, then how to compare that? See that here, compare to. Okay, compare to is there. So we can compare here with this particular value. So suppose see compare to, or let me see, get it a character yet. I want to get a character at position five. What is that character? It is substring get a character at five at position five. Now see that value what it prints j j is written. Similarly, you can verify. I want to verify this language variable value with another string. Then we can use language dot compare to language dot equals this also we can use language dot compare to can be used or we can use here language dot equals see that equals equals ignore case there are two things equals means suppose if i give my value as uh, inside this i want to verify language variable value with this particular value core space java that means if this variable value is equal to this particular string then it returns what is the written value? It returns uh, boolean value. I think so. It should be. It should return boolean value. Let us see that. Language equals equals. Run this. It should return true or false. True. That means this language variable is equal to this particular string. Suppose now, if I give here small small letter core Java, C is small letter. Now see what value it returns. Let me give, let me again copy this. So now I'm giving small letter. It is small letter. Now run. It returns false. See that false. The second value is false. Because this equals method will come, will consider a case also, that character's case. Is it uppercase or lower case? That also should match. So this is called a case sensitive comparison. Okay, it is a case sensitive comparison. Suppose if I want to ignore case sensitive comparison, that means my expected string can be in capital letters or in small letters. I don't want to bother about that. So in that case, if I want to ignore that case sensitive comparison uh, while comparing two strings, then you should use this method. What is that method? Equals ignore case. There is one more method, correct? Let us use that, see that. Now there is one more method, language dot equals ignore case. This is the method we have to use. And here we can use small letters. Now what will happen? It returns true value because 
the method what we are using ignore case method e equals ignore case method we are using so it won't consider that case sensitive comparison so the strings may be in different case but value should match it won't compare that case of each character it compares only the value of that character is it matching or not it can be in capital letter or small letter it will ignore that okay see now it returns true value see third one is true it is equals ignore case equals ignore case ignore case so like this right we can use these string methods are very useful really in real time while writing our while developing our automation scripts also these string methods really very very useful but because you may have to do a lot of validations verifications in your test cases so when you are automating those test cases then definitely you have to automate those verifications as well so to automate validations and verifications of your test case then definitely these string methods will help us a lot okay so i request you to practice uh, these methods it is important okay and similarly you can use some character methods as well uh, let us see some character methods character methods methods see here we already have defined one variable of type character ch variable is defined as a character type with value capital a so now i want to check that uh, system dot out dot print line uh, let us let me check that i want to check that character is it lower case letter or capital uh, upper case letter i want you can check that so check lower case i want to check that lower case or upper case letter check 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 ch variable is lower case or upper case i want to check that is it lower case how we can check that ch dot oh it's not coming okay you have to use character dot yeah character dot see that here there are so many very methods is digit okay see is is lower is letter hmm? is lower case is there here got it is lower case that particular character value variable value is it lower case or in upper case that can be checked here see what is value ch variable i want to check i want to check this variable value is it in lower case or upper case now it is in ch what is the value of ch it is a capital a but we are checking for lower case so it returns a false got it so it should return false so like this we can use a character methods there are some character methods also suppose if you want to check upper case upper case then you have to use is upper case method character dot is upper case method is upper case method yeah so like that whether this particular character is a numeric digit that also is their method is available is digit we can check that also is digit see that is it alphabetic is it digit that character value is a numeric digit that also can be verified okay so like this we can use some some of the character methods also sometimes useful in our scripting development so now let me run these two it should print false and true for characters okay done so these are all some important uh, data types and how to use uh, some data type methods in the program in our java programs like string methods character methods integer methods so these are all some important methods right uh, frequently we will be using in java program so i will share you uh, my document i have document with examples for each uh, uh, data type uh, with some more examples so you can you can practice this uh, right small small programs so it will help you to understand and to feel that uh, java programming how to write and how to sometimes how to use these methods 
that also you will be getting familiar if you practice it if you execute it if you don't practice it definitely right it will uh, create uh, you cannot uh, use it whenever it is required you cannot uh, right get into your mind immediately see what method we have to use here if you don't practice it so that's why i'm requesting you i will share you this document where you can find with the sample uh, programs so you can go through these programs and type it in your eclipse and try to execute all these uh, programs sample programs so definitely it will help you to understand better the concepts of what we are discussing and if you have any uh, doubts or any the issues uh, while running these programs so please ask me in the next session so that we will discuss your any issues or any doubts if you face or any if you have any issues or any doubts in this programs execution uh, we will see that okay to clarify your doubts or if there is any issues that you are facing we can look into those issues and doubts as well maybe before starting next session you can raise or you can raise your queries while in these programs guys in the sample programs if you have any doubts so any any questions guys in the data types concept what are the data types what are the java data types primitive data types okay and <clears throat> boolean means true or false that we know right it is a boolean means just true or false character is just character uh, one single character string is set of characters it is an array of characters you can say string is an array of characters and what is this reference data type this reference data type will be used for objects so when we are when we will be discussing about objects then at that time you can understand that object every object is called reference data type okay we will see that later how to create objects for classes at the time you will understand that okay fine yes you have any questions now here do you have any queries any questions in data types nagraju no no pressure sir rajesh raja okay so now now i will go with next uh, right small concept uh, simple concept operators different types of uh, operators what operators we can use in java program and let me show you i will be i will be just showing you simple small uh, few operators examples you can practice with more examples i have i have in my document so these examples and all you can please try to practice it at least once so that you can be right uh, knowing that operator what is that operator sometimes it will be useful while while i while writing the programs java programs but generally we known we don't use all the operators in our java programming but sometimes still if you practice at least once it will be good okay so now let us see that important operators what are the operators uh, let me create a new class for operators new class operators operators function so as usual we should define main method to execute this class public static void main string args that okay now see there are different types of uh, operators are there uh, the first category first operators category is automatic operators generally in every programming in every program we used to do a lot of automatic uh, operations like additions multiplications divisions okay and exclusive or so other automatic operators general automatic operators automatic operator operators so generally what are the automatic operators we have uh that list right i will provide you simply uh, plus correct and minus subtraction and asterisk it is for multiplication hmm? division for division and apart from that what else we have apart from that we have some exponentiation 
you know what that is this character this character cap character it is we don't use this much but maybe in any what is that uh, scientific calculations we it might be required otherwise in normal programming we don't use this uh, exponent operator much okay arithmetic operators after arithmetic operators we have assignment operators assignment operators assignment operators means what all the assignment operators we have equal here we have one more important uh, arithmetic operator that uh, you, we should see uh, this one guys and minus what is this incrementer and a decrementer plus plus and minus minus i will show you one example how it works okay and let us see assignment operators equal and we have many things like this plus equal and similarly minus equal we can write asterisk equal and also division equal hmm? now let us see if some examples for this uh, so i think so all these things these are all common and the general operations uh, operators let us see these two plus 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 i will declare some variable integer x is equal to some 10 x is equal to 10 now if i print system dot out dot print line see if i print here x plus plus x what value will be printed say i'm printing here plus inside bracket plus plus x sorry. plus plus x what value will be printed here what is the value of uh, x and what value will be printed here it prints 11 got it see that if i run this statement program 11 is printed see that now if i if i write here x plus plus what value will be printed And after that, if I print x value, what will be printed? What is the x value after this? See that. First I am printing plus plus x, and then we are printing x plus plus, not plus plus x again here, x plus plus, then again printing x. So here it will print 11, and here it will print 11 again and here it will print 12 let us see that and then try to understand how it works see that here and here it is printing 11 11 in the third system out statement it is printing 12 why it is happening see very simple logic plus plus x means first it will increment x value by 1 so x becomes 11 then it will be printed so that's why 11 is printed here so here what's happening first it will print x value what is the current x value 11 so 11 is printed after printing x value x will be incremented so now x becomes 12 when it when it will increment it after printing x value it will be incremented so that's why 11 is printed but x is modified to 12 so that's why in the third line it is printing 12 now x value after running this statement x value is 12 now so that's why it is printing here 12 all of you clear how plus plus x or x plus plus will work similarly minus minus also decrementation also before and after before decrementation or after decrementation okay fine now let us see how these assignment uh, will be working let us see that uh, suppose if i write here 
suppose if I declare one more variable y is equal to integer y is equal to 5 5 now I am printing x plus equal x plus equal y it is my statement x plus equal y x plus equal y y say how what is the value now what is the value of x here at this statement x value is 12 right so in this statement what value will be printed and what what is the value of x let us see that x is equal to x plus y what is the meaning of this statement x is equal to x plus y that is the meaning of this statement so x is already 12 here so y is 5 so x is equal to x plus y means 12 plus 5 so 17 is printed so like that all these operators will work x is equal to x plus y x is equal to x minus y x is equal to x into y so like this all these operators will work got it see now if i say uh, minus now x is equal to x minus y what is the value where well, will be printed 17 minus 5 x value is 17 now so minus 5 12 should be printed see that 12 is printed got it now so how this uh, arithmetic operators with assignment operator with equal okay so these are all assignment operators and arithmetic operators examples now let us see another important operators uh, relational relation operators relation operators relation operators that means a comparison operators we can say that also comparison operators so in relation operators well, what are the operators we have in java we have less than less than symbol greater than symbol less than or equal to correct and greater than or equal to and equal to what is a uh, character for equal double equal we have to use if you want to compare any two values are equal or not by using character uh, operator this is the operator equal operator equal comparison operator and if you want to compare a uh, not equal then this is the not equal less than and greater than symbols together should be used as not equal operator okay sorry yes i think so i'm i'm wrong not equal is not this one this one in java i'm confusing with the vb script okay this is the java not not equal means we should use like this not equal clear yes it is not equal in java now let us see that examples see for example now if i say if i if i want to verify if x is equal to y then i can write if condition if x equal to y within the brackets always uh, condition should be defined within the braces in the if condition in java if condition okay and then i want to print system dot out dot print line print line this is x is equal to y x is equal to y yes else i can write else also else means if that condition fails then i want to print x is not equal to y x is not equal to y or i can say i can write in english x is equal to y and here x is not equal to y x is not equal to y that that's it okay so here i'm using a uh, equal comparison operator now run this see that x is not equal to y because x is equal to 10 y is equal to 5 now suppose if y is equal to 10 to make it y is equal to 10 what we should do in this statement y is equal to 12 correct so if i write here y is equal to y minus 2 now y becomes uh, 10 and x also 10 so both should be 10 10 10 now now let me then
it should be is still not equal why y is 12 oh sorry x is 12 not y got it x is 12 so i have to make y also 12 or i have to make x also 5 so what i can do x i will make it 5 12 minus 7 correct 12 minus 7 is 5 12 minus 7 it is x value i have to put x is equal to x minus 7 not y now y is 5 x is 12 after this statement so i am i am reducing 7 from x now x also will become 5 both should be same now okay x is equal to y so this statement is executed that means this condition is pass similarly suppose if you want to compare not equal now let us see that and just simply i'm comparing by using not equal so we should use here if this is not equal exclamation symbol and equal symbol we have to use now if you run this see both are printed here in this when you run this the conditions this statement is executed and when you are running this statement which is executed <clears throat> this is executed got it okay, because this condition is failed here so that's why else part is executed so what is this if condition is how if condition is working if this condition is passed, then it will execute if if statements. If this condition is failed, then it executes else statements. So that is how the if else condition statements will work in Java. Okay. So it is like a if condition. Conditions we can check different um, conditions by using uh, if statement in Java. So inside if condition, how you define the condition by using relational operators we use mostly relative op relational operators inside conditions okay this is about relational operators and the next one we have another important operators boolean operators boolean operators i can say boolean or logical operators these things boolean operators so boolean operators will be always applied on boolean values boolean values means true or false so now let me define two boolean variables uh, let us say boolean is a data type and let me define a is equal to true is my one boolean value variable and one more boolean variable b is equal to false i have defined two boolean variables now let us see what are the operators we can uh, operations we can do on these boolean variables so let me give you that boolean operators list first the list of boolean operators that we can use in java and sorry not and it is in vb script yes okay and ampersand i have to use this is the symbol for and and means if i if i use a and b a and b both should be true then a and b should be true correct and similarly r r should be defined like this by using vertical line pipeline it is called pipeline okay vertical line this is r and we have uh, another thing exclusive r exclusive r is a cap here cap exclusive r exclusive r means exclusive r that means uh, if a a and b both variables should not be same then it is true if both are same then it is uh, false that is called exclusive r and also we have uh, we can use two ampersands it is called shortcut and shortcut and it is called shortcut and shortcut and operator okay and similarly we have uh, we can use two pipelines it is also called shortcut r shortcut r now let me show you simple examples let us apply these operators on these two variables see that system now out dot print line uh, suppose if you want to apply a and b a and b 
a and b so let us see what is the value of a and b now a is true and b is false so what should what is value should be printed it should print false correct a and b should be false out dot print line correct right any error operand is un unidentified huh? boolean only right okay put bracket yeah brackets since if there is no brackets this a is considered as a string okay so braces so now let us see that if i run this it should print to false a a on b is equal to false now similarly if i put a and a or b a or b sorry a or b a or b now it will print to true a or b is a true it should be true true now let us see What's that? Something wrong. Both are deleting. Okay, type it. Okay. Let us say this. okay true see that it is exclusive or when exclusive or is true a and b should not be same either that value can be either true or false that is not the matter but both but both the value should not be same suppose if i put here true now what is the results of these three statements a and b is true a or b is true a exclusive or b also true all three should be true now if you run this these statements see that oh sorry it is false because a and b both are true what is the rule of a exclusive b a exclusive or b will be true only if a and b both are not same got it if both are same a exclusive or b is false that's why it is now false a and b both are same so it is false if one value is different then it is true it will be true okay guys clear so these are all boolean operators okay these are all important operators we use frequently in the in the java programming automatic operators assignment operators and uh, relational operators relational or comparative comparison operators relational operators and another one boolean operators these are the important categories and there is one more category called bitwise operators those operators will be applied on binary values okay so i'm not going into that because it's not required we don't use it much in the java programming concept but in the document you can find that also if you are interested you can go practice that nothing wrong that means these operators so that uh, will be applied on boolean value binary value said not boolean value binary values binary values means if i take a see that if i take a, a value some value 10 that value will be converted into binary value that means uh, that value will be divided by 2 and whatever the remainder we are getting those the remainders will be put in a, a sequence number that that is the binary number that means that number will be converted into zeros and ones that is called binary number so after converting the normal number into binary value these operators will be applied that is called bitwise operators okay that is another type of category available in java but now i'm not looking into that okay so this is about operators yes any questions guys in operators this is a simple concept there is nothing uh, 
difficult or anything here in this uh, today's concepts what we discussed these are all basic things in any programming language first we should understand these two concepts what are the data types and what are the param uh, operators are available and another important concept control statements what are the different types of control statements are available and how to use those control statements what is the syntax and how to use those control statements if you know these three concepts then you can be able to write a basic program by using any programming language if you know these three concepts on that particular language in that particular language if you know these three basic concepts then easily you can write a simple program so if these are the basics that we should know in any programming languages so today we discussed two basic concepts of core java programming language first one is data types what are the different types of data are there primitive primary data types are there in java and how and we have seen that how data can be converted into one data type to another data type by using auto conversion and by using type casting and by using uh, some uh, methods like string methods and integer methods got it and also we have seen some set of uh, string methods and some set of character methods very useful methods these methods will be very useful in in java scripting okay and next important concept is operators so what are the different types of operators are available in java like automatic operators assignment operators and relational operators and last one boolean operators these are the important operators that we will be using frequently in the java programming and the last one is bitwise operators that is not uh, that much important that means we don't use that frequently in the programming okay guys so my request is all of you please practice uh, i will share you this document today's session document related document as well as sample programs so all of you please practice this uh, sample programs at least once before next session and you can ask me if you have any queries or any doubts in those in your practice okay guys do you have any questions in today's session navraj do you have anything and raja no, nothing yeah okay yeah okay guys thank you uh, thank you all and maybe see you tomorrow i will share you this document okay bye